I've been told by everybody up on this roof that they're all off the roof. I am on the roof of Explosion 4. Got fire through the roof of the fire building in the entire rear section. Please, I was never given the payday. As you can account it for, okay? 610B, that was the main date, 610B. I'm out uh, here, we got a fire. One and a half story, single family dwelling, fire shown from the second floor, give me a second alarm on this. See up there, top floor, I got people hanging out the top floor windows with a baby. Commercial building, uh, a lot of fire, a lot of smoke, go ahead and strike a third alarm on my orders on this. We got people on the front fire escape here with windows sensors below them, we need somebody up there. Yeah, let them know we got a job. I'm pulling up now. Second alarm, I got a one-story single-family frame. Heavy fire showing from the attic. So we're using all hands. We got one line stretch, fire on the fourth floor. Second line being stretched. Primary searches are underway. Hey, we're back. Welcome to Old School. And we're sitting here again, um, uh, just... Uh, Again, having another conversation, and we, we needed to press record. That's I, We've talked about this so many times, John, when we're at the airport with our hotel rooms together. That's, God, we should have recorded this, and now we're just hurrying up and pushing a button so we can record some of the stuff we're talking about and, and uh, just kind of share some thoughts. But, um, uh, you, you know, John, uh, I think our last show uh, we did um, – uh, an episode about breaking in the probie, the new firefighter, the rookie recruit or whatever, about the importance of breaking him or her in the right way. Um, uh, what, what, I guess the question is, what do you want, what do you want to talk about today uh, for old school? Well, you know, it, it actually came up during that program, and, and uh, we mentioned it a few times since then. I, I think talking about the senior man, the senior firefighter, is, is a great topic because uh, – Listen, everybody has probies. Everybody has recruits. Everybody has some system, whether it's good, bad, or otherwise, on how to break them in and deal with them. But a lot of folks don't even address, don't even acknowledge the presence of the senior firefighter in the company or on the ship or in the crew or in the firehouse. And I think it's a, I think it's a gigantic um, omission. I think it's a real miss. Uh, it's a great resource. Having a senior firefighter in a company or in every company or on the ship is a – I almost treated the senior firefighters that worked with me over the years, squad one and 48 engine. I, I treated them almost like a sergeant. They were almost like, like, like a junior officer in a way. They, uh, they, they handled a lot of stuff for me that I didn't even know was getting handled. Um, so anyway, I think senior man is a great topic to talk about. I, I don't think, you know, 30 minutes is even adequate, but we can certainly talk about a lot of that, a lot of the important elements of a senior firefighter, what makes a senior firefighter, ways to use, effective uses of the senior firefighter, not uses like you're utilizing them, but, but how they can help you as an officer and how they can be very helpful with their company with or without the officer's direct knowledge or input. Sometimes see, senior firefighters are maintaining traditions and, and standards in a company on the apparatus floor that the guy jumping in the front right seat might not even know about. Well, and you said might not even know about. How many times, you know, have we been visiting with folks before and we've talked about the senior man, the senior firefighter, where, where he or she, first of all, doesn't have to have necessarily 25 years or 30 years on a job. Some a 10-year guy in a Johnny company, right? Yeah, so, some fire departments, you know, a younger group of guys and gals, a newer, you know, your senior firefighter may have five years in rank as a firefighter, six years, but have their act together. Um, and we've said this how many times, John? There are so many officers – that and not in a bad way. They they don't realize that the reason they're succeeding, the reason they're successful, the reason things are going well on their shift or at their volley joint is because of that senior firefighter. Because you know, there's so many things, like you said, that are going on behind the scenes that you don't even know about. I don't mean covering up. I don't mean that stuff. I mean they're dealing with things and taking care of things and 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 uh, um. You know, let's let's break this down. What what the, we talked about the proby last time, uh, breaking into proby, the importance, John, of the senior firefighter when it comes to the proby. How about that? Let's start right there. And that's quite important. Um, obviously, we teach the company officer academy. We've both been chief officers and company officers for a long time, and 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 we can't you can't overemphasize the value and importance of the impact of company officers. Having said that. Senior firefighters probably spend more hours per day and more days per year on a shift with a, with a younger firefighter or a new firefighter than the officer does. The officer comes out for drill, for training, you know, in the morning probably, maybe a little bit of social time on runs. But the company officer, uh, but the uh, senior firefighter rather, is, is probably spending a, a majority of their hours and time mingling with, interacting with, you know, assigning with, monitoring, watching, helping, 
the junior firefighter. So I, I think one of the major functions of a senior firefighter, I don't even want to call it a major function, one of the, one of the most positive impacts a senior firefighter can have on a shift or on a crew or a company is that they, they are probably the lead, the lead person when, when it comes to junior or new firefighters. I've even been in companies where I was an officer, I was a captain of 48 engine. We'd have a firefighter transfer from somewhere else. Guy with three, four, five years on the job, trying to get out of maybe a mediocre company or a place that wasn't quite as busy as he wanted to, and he managed to get the 48 engine. The senior guys jumped on that guy like he just got out of probing school. Not, not, not quite with the same vigor, but they still jumped on him like, okay, here's how we do things around here. You're, you're, in, a, you're, you know, you're in a new planet now, and here's what we do, and here's the kitchen, and we don't watch TV in here, and, and we all do this together, and just the junior men do that, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I think the, uh, that single first uh, job or impact that the senior firefighter has is a tremendous one on new firefighters and uh, probationary. Exactly, and then it, you, you talk about that, and then how it carries onto the rest of the crew, the rest of the company. Um, like we said, we started this this episode, this show about you know so many bosses don't even realize they've got they've got this guy or gal, the senior firefighter over there cranking, cranking the machine. You know, we, we used to call you know they're they're the morale officers on a particular shift or department. But they're over there cranking the machine, and they're and they're putting out a product, and they're making sure. You know, a lot of times they're either getting in with the officer before the officer or right after that officer gets there. We're not talking about Minutemen here. We'll talk about that another show. But they're there early. They're getting things ready. They grab a hold of that young firefighter. And, and, and like you said, not, not as a bully or as a thug, but got 99 times out of 100, they become a mentor to that young firefighter. Um, you, you, know, you, you see him walking around. You see that young firefighter almost bumping into him. That they're, you know, it's like, hey, put three feet behind it between us. You know what I'm saying? They're right. everywhere you right. go, and you got this senior guy or gal showing them the tools, the department, the things. Uh, this is the routine. This is the stuff, and so on and so forth. And I think the overall product, John, as they work with that probie, they work with that new firefighter as a senior firefighter. Now the payoff is to the rest of the crew, to the rest of the company, as to what you're producing in the way of that 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 cog that fits into your shift perfectly. Right, and it's also a, a little bit of a refresher. So if you've got a crew of two or three or four, whatever, wherever you work, um, the senior man may be paying attention, may be focusing on the junior firefighter, the brand new firefighter, explaining things. But he's also, he's also reintroducing those ideas and those standards to the other firefighters who, they, who are there helping as well. Um, so it's not, just like the, it's not just like the attention goes only to the junior firefighter, but, but, but the other junior firefighters or the other less senior folks that are part of the crew uh, number one, they're going to join in. Number two, they're getting sort of broken in in a way to be a senior firefighter someday. They're sort of watching the senior firefighter interacting with the brand new one and saying to themselves, wow, I, I could jump in on this. I, I could throw something in on this conversation. Maybe someday I'll be the senior firefighter. So it gives other firefighters something to aspire to. One, one point that I think that's very important that, that covers this, this whole issue today, this, this whole program that we're talking about today, every aspect of what the senior firefighter does must be in line with what the officer does. Senior yeah. firefighters are not running their own company. No. And if you have a senior firefighter that's running their own company, you know, on the floor below the captain or the lieutenant who's up in the office and would maybe do things differently, that, we have a problem. That's not the way it should be. And we've seen that, right? Haven't we seen that where we've seen the lazy doesn't know their names, doesn't only shows up for, for a meal or for the call, company officer sits up there and you've said it, what happens? A senior firefighter steps up and they end up running the crew. We've actually told stories about that, but right. you're right. So they're yeah, they're not running the shift or the crew, but they're like they're like the aide to a battalion chief. They're like that. They're they're that arm, if you will, right for the lieutenant or captain. You know, right. the same mission, same same agenda, same thought process, same you you, you know. Like my son James said when he was when he was in the Marines, he's still in the Marines. He's a captain. As a captain, as a lieutenant, he's got sergeants that work for him, and those sergeants are like the senior men. They're the guys that 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 do the conversations. They're the guys that run the drills. They're the guys that get the guys up and get them going again, stopping them and slowing them down and and keeping their eye on them. They'll come to him, hey, uh, lieutenant, I think we got a problem with this guy over here. So it's it's a very very similar situation to that where you have these folks are, are being given. The authority through the officer, right? It's not official authority. It doesn't say anywhere in the FDMY manual that a senior firefighter, that the truck chauffeur, you know, is allowed to do this, that, or the other thing. I remember being 
a new young firefighter with about three years on a job, two or three years in 11 truck, which is a place I transferred to as a young firefighter. And Richie Barto was the senior man. He was the chauffeur and he was the senior man of 11 truck in my shifts and my groups. And boy, oh boy, number one, he knew everything I needed to know. He was always keeping his eye on me, as was the officer, but the officer was running the whole company and then taking care of the chief's needs and stuff, right? He'd be looking at me saying, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be out here. You're supposed to be around the back right now. He would give me guidance. If I, if I knew I didn't know something, he's the guy I would seek out. Richie, Richie, how the hell do I get to the roof? Join the building? Yes, yeah, Sammy, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. You know, he'd give me some encouragement, you know, and he's the same guy. Let me tell a quick story. So the senior man, I'm up on the top floor one day, vacant building, crappy old empty building on the, on the Lower East Side. We're pulling ceilings. The fire's out. and We're just washing down. And, of course, the rule everywhere is, and if you don't have it, you better, you better instill it. You don't give up your tool. <laughs> I know this story. You carry a tool and it's your tool. You carry two tools in there, both your tools. I'm not saying you don't share tools with another guy to force a door or something. I'm saying if a guy walks up to you, hey, give me the hook. I need it for a second. You tell him, no. What do you need pulled? I'll pull it for you, right? So th- th- that's, 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 that's not in concrete. That's in stone. That's in granite, okay? So anyway, it was as true back then as it is now. And I'm standing there pulling ceilings. And Richie Bottle, the senior man, comes in, sticks his head in. Guy's got 20-something years. I got... Two, two years. Uh, <laughs> give me the hook. I said, Richie, what do you need? Just give me the hook for a second. Richie, I'll come out there and do it. What is it? Just hand it to me. I'll give it right back. And I hand it to him. And what does he do? He wings it right out the back window. <laughs> he throws it out the back window of this six-story building. I mean, he didn't even look out, really. But um, and, and what do I do? I put my head down, walk out to the hallway, down the stairs, six flights, out the front door, around to the alley, down the alley. They're all looking at me like, where's, where's, where's this new guy going? Pick my hook up, walk back in. It was, it was embarrassing. It, I must tell you, it never happened again. But look at the power of the senior firefighter. Look what he did that day. I, I tell that story, that's 35 years ago. And it's, it's still fresh in my memory because he was trying to show me the right way. And it's not just about, like, you know, we always talk about, you know, in one of our programs, Five Alarm Leadership, um, we t- in real leadership, real people, we talk about, do you really care what, color, what kind of helmet they wear? Meaning, it doesn't mean helmet, it means tool, patch, logo. It doesn't have to be the fact that he, you gave me your hook. You, you're exa- that story is attached so, to so many different things as to the impact the senior firefighter has on that new guy or gal that's coming to work for you. And again, the, you could tell the great ones don't yell and scream and holler and demean and humiliate and call you names and all that. They, they just have a, a, a way about them that mentoring kind of way, that, that uh, big brother, big sister kind of way of grabbing a hold of that new firefighter and showing him or her the right way and what they need to do. Now, I talked before, John, you know, I mentioned this before, that when it affects the whole crew now, you know, you've got them molding and taking care of that, that probie, again, the arm from the company officer. Now it comes to performance and it comes to training. How, 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 how many times have you seen – Training going on on the floor or the kitchen table, whatever, outside, being conducted by the senior firefighter. And I will say this. Sometimes, you know, you're up in the office, you're taking care of stuff, you got things, you know, the, the, the you know, deputy came and told you, you got to do this or whatever. And before you know it, the senior firefighter says, okay, let's go. Let's go, everybody, on the floor. And the senior firefighter is running a drill, taking care of business for you, you know, making sure the training is getting done. Um you know, take, taking care of, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've even had that conversation where I'm bogged down trying to get some evaluations done and some paperwork from the last shift that I had a big job and I didn't get done. I'm like, Willie, can you do me a favor? Can, can you just go over to pump panel with the two young guys and see if Tommy will help you as well? I, I'll try and get down there, but, I'm, but I don't want to miss a drill. I don't want them to go a day without a drill. You got it, Cap. And off he goes. You know, so you delegate a little job like that to him because he's certainly capable and knows how to do it. And he's doing it with your authority, with your, with your say-so. But he's helping you out, too, because you're able to get some of your other stuff done at the same time. Not that any of that is more or less or anything important, but you can get the drill done with, with a good senior firefighter. Oh, you can get – think about how many things get done. And, and, again, you know, this isn't about so you could create an atmosphere where the company officer sits up in the office, puts their feet up, not do anything. No. So this is that machine. This is that well-oiled machine that you – you know, and, and I just think there's been times we've been at places for a visit, John, where we've actually witnessed, we've seen – companies we've seen firehouses missing this important element and it's like a big red blinking nose right in the middle of the room that you go 
there's this gap in between. You got a good company officer trying to get stuff done, and you've got some firefighters that are they're they're trying, but there's no the link in the middle, that important link that that that, that kind of makes it all happen. Um, you know, when it comes to cleaning tools, taking care of tools, showing that probie, that young firefighter, how to take care of that stuff. How about this? How about response times? You know, again, folks, don't, don't, don't forget as a new company officer, I'm sorry, let me back up as a company officer with a new firefighter or with your crew as the new company officer, you better be sitting down explaining your expectations and what it is you expect and all that stuff so on and so forth. And, 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 you, you know, when it comes to getting out the door quickly and tools and, and SCBA and rig checks and being ready to go and ready to do battle and battle ready and all that stuff. But response time, just kicking them out the door quickly and talking about that. And then how many times have you seen senior firefighters kind of police that, have, grab a probe on the side and say, come here for a second. You, look, right. you should be the last one on the rig. That's right. Exactly. Let, let me tell you a great, let me tell you a great story about that. I, uh, I, uh, I'm working one night in 48 engine and a run comes in. I slide the pole. I go down, I, I get on the rig and, uh, it's still dark. I'm walking across the apparatus floor. There's a couple of little night lights on, you know, they don't keep it light at night, but it, it, I walk across to the rig. The rig's sitting there in the dark. I, I, I swing the door open. I start to climb on <clears throat> the rig starts up like, like I started. <laughs> I, I look in the cab. There's Willie. There's my chauffeur, Willie Tracy sitting in the seat, two o'clock in the morning. Sitting in the seat, fully dressed, cigar in his mouth, lit. Let's go, Cap. Let's go. First do. You know, he was the first guy in the ring. I didn't even know where he was. I didn't even know where he was. I jumped out of bed when that run came in, you know? And but but the other guys knew too. The other firefighters knew too. And and they knew if, if Willie and the captain are in the front seat, they're leaving. If you're not on the rig. And and he used to be on him. I'd hear him occasionally. If we come back from a run, I'd be going up the stairs to the office and I'd hear him saying, Riley, come here. Where were you? And I just keep walking up the stairs. And there he is throwing a little enforcement on one of the young guys like, hey, you don't, you don't get up and brush your teeth and, uh, and, and everything else when we're out of run, you know? Oh, exactly. And, 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 and that, now we're talking about response times, getting out the door quickly, how to carry your tools, the little tricks of the trade that you're going to learn from those, those senior firefighters. Um, you know, and, and John, I think that senior, I, I, you know, I often refer to them also as my go-to guys, you know, the go-to guys and gals that you go to with, with anything. And they'll jump on. I know we always talk about this. You call me your favorites. I call my go-through guys. But, you know, you, you know it. There's been times where you've had six people downstairs and you went, oh, God, all right, how am I going to get this? This is not going to be pot. You know what? Anytime I go to, to, to Willie, anytime I go to Lisa, anytime I go to Sarah, anytime I go to, to, to Gary, I know, I know hands down, they're going to be like, Cap, w w just tell me what you need. Look, I work here. I'm part of this department. All right, you know what? I'll – Good, good, and you know, and you know, what I'm saying those people that never bitch and complain, you know, get you to a point where you don't have to worry about. It. You just hand out the assignments, they run off, they do it, they come back, a ALT or cap, it's done. You you've talked before about senior firefighters, you know, about those good company officers enforcing your rules for you. As a company officer, you know, there's been you we've talked about this before. There's been discipline. And I don't mean like, you know, suspensions, but there has been issues handled on the floor or downstairs or out there, if you will, by the senior firefighter that the lieutenant or company officer never knew about. And I'm not, again, folks, we're not talking about covering for stuff or whatever. You get, I'll, I'll use this example, John. We talk about this in class a lot. The firefighter who's tardy again, you know, the, and, and I'm not saying just be, they don't give a crap about the job. You know, new lifestyle, they're getting adjusted. Maybe they live a ways from the firehouse. They haven't adjusted the traffic yet. And, you know, now that senior firefighter is the one saying, you know what, tell you what, um, we're, we're going to help you a little bit. First of all, haha, I'm going to buy you alarm clock. Secondly, um, you need to get in here on time and get ahead of time. You know, if that means leaving your house 30 minutes earlier and getting here 30, you know, 30 minutes early because, you know, of, of a traffic situation that, you know, we got to be smarter than the stone here and figure this stuff out, you know, so no more being late, no more being tardy, no more, you know, not make it, no more check. You know, I saw you didn't check this right. You know, if the captain finds out about that, you're going to be in deep doo-doo, you know, you will check your air pack. Every, and, you, and there's so many little things of, I don't even know if you call them discipline as much, you call them running the routine that is done on the floor by the senior officer that you never, ever, you never know about. Or how about this, John? How many times have you heard this? Hey, Cap, you got a sec? Look, I just want to make you aware of something. Give you a heads up. Um, 
you know, Johnson was uh, was late again. You know, don't worry about it. I'm, if you hear about it, that's fine. We're, I'm already dealing with it. Um, he's going to be doing this. He's going to be getting early doing this. We doing it, and all this stuff's being handled by that senior firefighter. And and you're like, all right. And 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 there's some places, John, that think that that's wrong. They think that they think that the, the 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 lieutenant or the captain has to be the one that handles that stuff. And I, that, that, I they could be more wrong. Right. And you know what? You know what's interesting. And that whole little story you just told is there's a, there's a there's a delicate balance there between the officer and his authority as the officer, you know, and his let's call it his power, his official power, right, of 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 discipline and and directing people. And then there's that senior firefighter who works, you know, he works there at the pleasure of the of the company officer. He's his senior firefighter. He may even have more time in the company than the company officer, right? So there's a delicate balance there. That story you just told, uh, Billy just came in late again, but we got a cap and, uh, you know, we're going to handle these, do a little bit of this. Now, some officers might be like, well, wait a minute, Tommy, I wish you would have consulted me. You know, I want to be part of it. And I wouldn't be wrong to say that, but that's what I'm saying. There's that, there's that delicate balance there, because if you're a good officer and you have a good senior firefighter, even if for a moment, even if just for a millisecond, you said to yourself, ah, I, want to, I would love to be in on this. I want this kid to know that I'm part of this. Sometimes you got to bite it and, and sit back and say, Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Willie. And you know what I'm saying? And, and it's nothing even has to be corrected, even though for a moment there you thought, gee, maybe you'd want to be involved. So, like I said, it's sort of like a dance. You, you know, who takes the lead? Who's, who's got the lead for this song? Who's got the lead for that song? Sometimes you go back and forth a little bit. And if, and if you think the guy is getting maybe a little bit too forward and a little bit too or maybe straying from the way you want things done, those are the things you can talk about on the way back from a run. Hey, Willie, I see uh, Joey came in again. You had him, uh, you got him doing something you said? Yeah, you know, I got them coming in doing that. Oh, that's a good idea. You know what? Another thing you can do is I did, and then you can throw another thing out there at him and give him some direction of the way you want things to be done so he knows what's expected. And like I said, this isn't a negative comment at all here. This is a positive, but it is a, it is a very delicate balance between the officer and the, and the things that he delegates, the things he allows the senior firefighter to do in his name and with his authority. Oh, and, and right, and then you see – those senior firefighters go on to be great company officers because, you know, the, the, like I said, go-to people become go-to officer, company officers become go-to chiefs. And the follow-up question is, who would you want your kid crawling into a burning building with? You know, if I pick three company officers on your department or on that department, would you pick one over the other, the other two for your kid to be get spun around and be lost in a burning building with tonight? And hell yeah, you would. You know, but, and I, I remember that I tell this story a lot about um, meeting a couple, not meeting, I already knew your firefighters, but um, uh, your, your last night in the firehouse, uh, not the last night you worked, but last night in the firehouse, right. and, and big ceremony and uh, got all day long, like 500 people and just, they shut things down and it was just, it was incredible. And I'm leaning against the lockers and, and I'm kind of emotional because you're my best friend. I'm watching this, you know chapter, you know, closing another one, opening and so on and so forth. And I, and I taught two of you young firefighters and I, I tell you one of them I'd work for as a company officer. I mean, he kind of banged against the locker next to me and, you know, he's, I could see it some tears in his eyes. I said, pretty hard on. He goes, no, no chief, you have no idea. I said, no, he goes, no, you have no idea. How, you know, he goes, how much I'm going to miss that SOB working for him. And, and he says, don't get me wrong. He, he could be, he could be a damn safety nut, you know, um, I think he call you safety Nazi or whatever, but he goes, he could be one of those. You better get off the rig with your gear on, with your air pack on, with your tools in your hand. You better be ready to do battle. When he says get out, you get out. When he says you go in, you go in. And he says, you know, he can be tough to work for, but I'll tell you, you know, when you're in a tenement crawling on your hands and he's getting your ass kicked by the fire, you hear the 1-8 pull up and you hear on the radio his voice, you know things are going to get better. That firefighter, I can hear him giving that talk, John, to a probie. I can hear that senior guy. He's one of your senior guys on that ship. I can hear that firefighter giving that talk of, come here, let me talk to you, kid. Right. Look, you know, one of the many things you're going to hear about, I'm going to tell you this today. Every time, and, 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 and this is what our, our battalion chief expects, and I'm sure it happened when you were a captain. You know, the, uh, Timmy Clett, you told the story about Timmy Clett. You, leg, I'll just say legendary, great, great officer, legendary. You're one of your favorite company officers. You've got lots of them, but he's one of your favorite. About telling the new covering officer what to say and what not to say on the radio. If you rewound the clock and went back to when he was a firefighter, I can hear him as a firefighter 
I could hear Timmy at a, as a firefighter telling the new guy, as the senior firefighter telling the new guy, all right, this is, this is what Lieutenant right. McLaughlin expects. I can hear that talk of that senior guy or gal. So the, the whole taking care of things in the firehouse and not just making sure the floors get clean. It's all important, the firehouse and the tools. But, God, it's the, this whole world that this senior firefighter revolves in. And I'll tell you, John, don't you feel this way? Um, you know, a lot of the senior firefighters that are out there doing a great job don't even – it's like we say, a lot of people don't even realize they're a mentor. There's no badge that says, oh, I'm the mentor. I think a lot of firefighters don't even realize they're in that role of the senior firefighter, that they're having that much of an impact on their volunteer company or on their shift for their boss as they are, right? It's like kind of like, it's because they're, they're not even thinking, it's not even look at me, pound on my chest, I'm the senior firefighter. They have no idea of the impact on the whole picture that they're having. Yep, yep. And they and especially if it's if it's widespread in a department like the FDMY, that's widespread. The the use and benefit of of senior firefighters and companies all over the place is so is so normally accepted. It's so just the you know that it, most firefighters don't even realize that they do they do realize that they're knowledgeable of it, but they don't even realize it as a separate added on responsibility. They just think it's part of the job to help breaking in the firefighters and keeping everybody straight when the officers upstairs, they're downstairs, and you know I know young firefighters that are you know kidding around on the apparatus floor to straighten up when a senior firefighter walks on the floor, just like when they're on the floor, you know what I'm saying? Because they know he's probably more attached to them, although he's a, he is a firefighter too. So he's in a, in a pretty cool, pretty, pretty unique position of being, you know, aligned with the officer in lots of ways, but he's still a firefighter. He's still a brother firefighter. So he's, he's got a great relationship in both directions. If, as we finish things up here, John, um, Sum things up. If you were going to, uh, you're, okay, you're speaking to all our listeners, to the men and women that are listening to the show and in our classes, what, what would you tell the firefighters out there um, about, being, about being, you know, if you were sitting with a firefighter and you look and you went, you know what, if you're not already, you need to step up and be the senior fire. You need to be the senior firefighter, the senior man on your, the senior guy or gal on your ship. What would you tell them? Well, you know, it's not a one-way conversation. It's not just to the firefighters. I think the company officers have to realize the benefit of it because some of them don't want to yield. Some of them feel solely responsible, and you are actually True. solely responsible. True. But they, they don't want to yield. They don't, they don't want to defer any, anything to anybody else, and they have, they have to do that because using senior firefighters uh, to help you get the job done is, is a wonderful thing to do. And then, of course, you have to have willing, qualified, willing, qualified senior firefighters. Not just somebody who's been around for 10 years. I know guys that have been around 10 years couldn't put a fire out in a top hat. But there's guys that have been around for seven years that could run a company if the captain – and let's face it, FDMY is different. Dallas is different. Maybe Louisville is, it might not even be different. But a lot of places – in the FDMY, the only time a, a, a firefighter will rent the front seat is if there's nobody anywhere in the whole city of New York that can jump in that seat if a company officer gets injured. No shift ever starts with an acting officer. It always starts with an actual officer. So some places have, you know, a senior firefighter rides up for two weeks in the officer's seat right. while the officer's gone. And then, and, you know, they fill a spot in with another junior firefighter. So we don't even do that. Um, so senior firefighters are always firefighters. They're very rarely sitting up in the front seat. And, fi and, and company officers very rarely have to actually ever defer or delegate any of their duties. But the fact that in the FDNY, it, it's such a strong history of senior firefighters being very tight with their company officers and getting, you know, working on the same stuff from the same perspective. Well, like, like we said pretty much everywhere we go and on almost every show, if you want to have an impact on your department, step up, step up, be the leader, step up, be that guy or gal, have the, you know, be the impact person, have the person, you know, don't, don't blame others for not looking good for your department, not looking good for your station, not looking good, your company, whatever, be the person, be that, be that dynamo, be that like, Tasmanian devil that's always trying to find ways to make things better and if it means as a senior senior guy as a senior guy or gal you know what what a better way than being that person that not only just takes care of the probie the rookie team whatever sport. You team sport yeah team sport takes care of the team leads the team you know that 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 leader that doesn't get the extra pay that leader doesn't wear any of the trumpets or bars the person that has that impact so folks we've been talking about uh the senior firefighter Great idea, John. I'm glad you brought it up. The senior firefighter and the impact it has on your shift or your department. Again, volunteer career doesn't matter. But uh, hey, you know what? Hey, that finishes one more another episode of old school for us, John. 
Uh, we always end with a couple different things. One is uh, email for for them to get a hold of you at. Chief John Salka at gmail.com. And as always, I'm at Chief Lasky at gmail.com. And we appreciate you tuning in and uh, listening. Uh, please spread the word. Make sure you subscribe to either the YouTube channel or iTunes for old school. So you'll see you on the next episode. That's it, baby. That's it. Hey, we end all of our episodes reminding you to please keep the men and women uh, in our armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, we want you to be safe. Thank you once again. God bless you. And we'll see you next time.